YouTube, what's going on? You already know who it is. It's your boy Ron Real, aka Double R in the building, man. We got another special video for you guys. Finally, finally, finally found a Lancero that I thought was worthy of the first Lancero video for you guys. Hey, we're gonna pair this. We're elevating our games today, man. We're not doing the American bourbon. We're gonna do this Japanese whiskey, Hibiki 12 year. This is a banger. This is a banger. This parent should be a banger. Y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you what we got. All right, you guys. So, got a very, very special pairing for you guys today. I, I've been thinking the whole time. I love Lanceros. You guys have heard me say that Lanceros are my favorite size cigar. This is a traditional Lancero, seven and a half by thirty-eight LFD. One of my top favorite brands, and I love Cameroon wrapper. It's my absolute favorite wrapper. I figured this would be the perfect Lancero to pair with you guys. And also, even though this is a discontinued product, I love Japanese whiskey. As you guys know, I, I dabble in all kinds of spirits, man. I love Japanese whiskey, single malt scotch, bourbon, American whiskey. I like it all, man. And Yeho rum. So I figured this would be a perfect, perfect pairing. So we're going to just cut it up, light it up, smoke it, tell you guys what I think. Tell you guys if you should go out and get this. It's going to be hard for you guys to find this, but if you see it, you still should go grab it. This will probably run you around $100. The cigar ran me around 12. Hibiki doesn't do the 12 year old anymore, but they also do a offering called Hibiki Harmony. It is a blend of younger whiskeys. It's still a great product. I don't think you get as much wood as you do in the 12 year, which to me gives a little bit of complexity, but it's still a fantastic product and it's gonna run around $70, $75 if you can find it. So, but the cigar, it kind of reminds me of looking at, you know, when you're in your driveway at home and you're looking at a leaf that's on the ground, it's, it's got that brownness to it, but it has some blemishes, some light blemishes to it too. Seams are very tight. They're visible, but they're tight. Not really a lot of toothiness to it. It's just a very, very nice looking cigar. And then it also has this, this pigtail on the top of it. This is probably the first cigar review with the pigtail on it. It's like a classic Cuban um, style top, for lack of better words. I'm a huge, huge Cameroon rapper fan not that many manufacturers use it because it's actually the most expensive wrapper that you can put on a cigar and it's also the hardest to grow you don't see too many you see like uh fuentail use them lfd has some there are a few other companies out there too that use the cameroon wrapper so obviously it just stated the uh the wrapper is cameroon the binder is from dominican republic and the filler is from dominican republic and nicaragua we're gonna use the scissors today can't really punch that the head the 38 ring gauge head is a little bit too small to punch so it pretty much leaves you with just being able to do a straight cut to it get like a raisin flavor on that but it has a pretty good draw one of the and i will even admit this being a lancero fan one of the biggest downfalls is that they're the hardest to roll so usually manufacturers they want to use their more experienced rollers to roll a lancero and this one actually feels pretty good sometimes you'll get something that'll feel really hard and they'll cause uh draw issues like i've stated before it doesn't matter how good this cigar is supposed to be how much it costs how good the flavors are if the draw isn't good then that affects the experience and just like if you have to touch up a cigar way too much to me i'm all about relaxation and enjoyment i can't relax and enjoy a cigar if i'm constantly trying to pick at it pull tobacco out or trying to smush it to soften it up to be able to get a good draw out of it so this one is already showing pretty good signs of a, a decent draw very good very good draw already so I'm excited about that. What's funny about this pairing is I already knew I wanted to do the Hibiki 12 because I wanted to do something a little different. Like I, I was telling you guys, I'm gonna be doing a lot of red wines, Japanese whiskey, single malt scotches, and all of my pairings so far have been with bourbon. So I wanted to dabble in something different. So I wanted to do the pairing with the Hibiki 12, but I was just trying to figure out what cigar would be perfect to pair with that because as you guys also know, I'm more of a medium to full, full body cigar smoker and this whiskey is so delicate and so soft that if I would smoke the things that I traditionally like smoking, it would probably overpower that. So I, this, I felt this would be perfect as far as being smooth, flavorful, just the notes that you get from this. So that's how I came to with this. And then it came in the Lancero, which also is like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're going to do. The Cameroon just has this like distinct sweetness to it. It's not artificial. It just tastes, it's just got this, it's hard to put your finger on it, man. But if you smoke Maduro's, Connecticut's Naturals and stuff like that, and then when you get Sumatra's and Cameroon's, you can taste that difference. It just has this natural sweetness to it. There's a lot of leather on this right now. This is going to be, man, this, this is going to be good. As far as the Japanese whiskey, it is a uh, 43% alcohol by volume. Honey, 
bright fruit, a little bit of oak. This smells like really, it's really crisp and clean. It doesn't, you know with bourbons, it has that rugged kind of punch to it. This is real, real delicate. And which is weird because with Japanese whiskey, they got their influence mainly from Scotland over with, with scotch. But even the difference between a Japanese whiskey and scotch is just really, there's some similarities to it, but just the cleanliness of, uh, of the Japanese whiskey, as opposed to like, you know, if you drink a Isla of Scotch where that, that smokiness and that peatiness comes out. There's none of that here. This is just soft and clean. I'll show you guys, I'm gonna give you guys a picture of the legs on this. These legs are insane. Insane. All clinging all over the glass, man. I know y'all can see that. I'm excited already, man. That's very good. True to the nose, honey, bright fruits, a little bit of wood in there, not overpowering. This is it's really clean. I think even people that aren't really into scotch, if you wanted to dabble off into a product to try to get you to kind of step your way up into a single malt scotch, this would be perfect. It's just, it, it's a very, very good taste too. I'm gonna finish smoking through this first third, see what we looking like on flavor and strength wise with everything. So y'all hang tight, I'm gonna catch y'all in the second third. All right, so this first third, good news, it's already an elite pairing, already. I could tell in the first few draws and the first few sips of the flavors that each presented on their own, I knew when they were combined it was gonna be elite. I, I already knew it. So with this cigar, that Cameroon wrapper introduces this natural sweetness. So you have that traditional leather kind of quality to it and the earth quality, it, it all works well because that natural sweetness from that Cameroon is not really, you know, you can have San Andreas wrappers or uh, Connecticut Broadleys and they all present different kinds of sweetness. But the Cameroon wrapper is has a distinct sweetness to it that's very, very good. The ash has been doing very, very good. Burn line has been very good, as you can see. They've been falling off in about clunks like this. I would go right now, medium, medium body, medium strength. It's, it's not really any strength nicotine kick at all. This very, very enjoyable cigar. And with the 12, the Hibiki 12, gonna get bright fruits, a honey, a little bit of oak. It's, it's, it's very clean and crisp. The finish isn't as long as I would want. The flavors are so good. I still feel like this is an elite product on its own too. I would drink this any day of the week. This, this flavor profile would fit at any point in time. Summer, fall, winter, whatever. This is this is a good product. When I retro hill, I get a cinnamon flavor that comes out of this cigar. That with the regular draws, you get like a bread quality, but when you retro hill that cinnamon, is so it's like a cinnamon bread, and it's really really good. The new flavor that's introduced. When people are doing pairings, you have to keep in mind if you smoke first and then drink, or then you drink first and then smoke, that can alter things too. When you take a sip of this whiskey and then smoke, there's like this cherry hard candy flavor that comes. It's not, it doesn't last a long time, but it's there just, and it's intense for like, you know, five or six seconds and you get, you like, man, what the hell is that? And I, and as, after a couple of times doing it, I was like, that's cherry, that's what that is. So these are both gonna score very, very high. I haven't touched this cigar up at all. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about too was people will ask why Lanceros? Because with the cigar, you obviously have the filler, the binder, and the wrapper. The bigger that the cigar ring, ring gauge gets, the more filler that you're getting. All of your flavor is coming from the wrapper, or most of it is gonna come from the wrapper. So when you have a smaller cigar, the ratio of wrapper to filler to binder ratio is greater. So if this flavor profile, this Cameroon wrapper imparts certain flavors, if the Vitola is smaller, you're gonna get more flavor from it. So as they say, when the cigar is smaller, you're getting a lot more killer, a lot less filler. And on top of that, who in the hell wants to smoke? And me personally, I go over 60, I don't go over a 60 ring gauge because for obvious reasons, who wants to walk around smoking a cigar? You know, y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. So personally, I like to like to. I, I prefer to keep things under a 54 ring gauge and try to try to go under there. There are some 60 ring gauge cigars I do like. Most of them are box pressed though. But that is the reason why you'll see people smoking Coronas, Lanceros, things of that nature, Robustos. The flavor is better, and they're usually stronger. Usually. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're always gonna be stronger or they're always gonna be more flavorful, but the chances are that they'll be better. With that being said, I'm gonna keep enjoying this, going through this second, third. I'll catch you guys later, but definitely right now, this is an elite pairing. If I pick up this cigar, I'm reaching for Hibiki 12 every time because that flavor profile and that cherry hard candy is just intense and it's good, man. It's, I can't really say anything else about it, so I'll catch you guys at the end of the second, third. I'm probably about a good 20 minutes in. It's burning fine. It's going good, so I'll catch you guys later.
All right, finishing up the second third. Again, same elite flavors when I pair, but what's cool about the cigar is when I'm smoking it by itself and I'm not really drinking as much, the flavors are shifting again. It's definitely more wood notes. It's, it's gonna sound crazy because some of y'all gonna be looking at the screen like, man, yeah, right, motherfucker. But it, it tastes like a Snicker bar, man. Like it has that, that light chocolate flavor, that caramel and that nuttiness in there. Pause. It has that has all those qualities, man. And um, these are both gonna score very high. That's that's all I can say. If I pick up a uh, LB Cameroon cabinet uh, or Lancero, I'm reaching. For, if I'm at home, I'm reaching for this first before I even think about anything else. These flavors are just insane, man. Like I told y'all in the intro, banger bottle, banger cigar. I already knew what it was. Sometimes you just you could and and. Another thing, for the flavors to blossom so soon, that is much appreciated because, you know, I don't mind if the flavors are elite and they start coming in the second third of the back part of the cigar because that's cool because it's still happening. But if you can give me my cake and ice cream at the beginning and let me have it the whole time and I ain't got to worry about eating no dinner or no greens, hey, I'm all for it. So it's still burning good. Like I haven't touched the cigar up. So I'm just going to finish up in this last third. But I already have some numbers in my head where I think I'm going to put both of these at, you know, barring a major setback. But of course, I don't see it because the cigar has been performing really good. The whiskey's doing what it does too. So I'm going to catch you guys in this back third. Keep on smoking. I'm going to keep on drinking. I'm going to let you guys know what I got. We're going to come up with some numbers. So y'all hang tight and stay tuned. All right, we're well into the last third. Still an elite parent, still elite. But before I give the numbers, y'all know what time it is. That's right, it's the marriage. Shout out to Piero Maduro, shout out to Billy Boulevard. Cigar, a standout on its own. The Japanese whiskey, a standout on its own. Cigar, all right, so before I give the numbers, the cigar ended up at a medium to full body wise. So leaning towards the full, the flavors were very, very pronounced. They're very good, very intense. The strength, I'm gonna still go around. I'll go medium to full, but I'm gonna go back on that one. It's gonna be still more towards the medium side. A little bit, a little bit of strength, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Cigar was phenomenal. I'm gonna give this a 9.5. This is a 95 out of 100 for the cigar. And I'm gonna go 9.5, 95 out of 100 for the, the whiskey, man. Both of these together, I'm, it's 95 all across the board. This is elite pairing, elite cigar, elite Japanese whiskey. I'm telling you guys, if you can find the LFD Cameroon cabinet in Lancero, grab it. If you can find this Japanese whiskey in the 12 year or the Harmony, it's gonna be probably really hard to find the 12 year, but if you can find it, grab it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be around $100. The Harmony is gonna be about 70 or 75, and the stick cost me $12 buy it pair it up when you watch this video man comment back let me know what you think of it think tell me if you think it's a leak too tell me if you think i'm crazy either way man we, everybody's palettes are different but for me this is a lead all across the board probably got about another 10 to 15 minutes on this burn line still going good everything is phenomenal on this hey and with that being said don't y'all forget to get that subscriber count up because when i'm at 500 i'm going i'm going to release some monsters man i'm going to give Whoever wins that, that that contest, I'm telling you, you're going to be pleased with what I give you. The cigars are all going to be bangers, man. I think that's about it, man. So with that being said, thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like the video, comment on it, because you know I comment back. I like interacting with all the fans, interacting with all the people, man. I, I really enjoy this. I'm enjoying doing all this. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying the content, too. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell because I'm dropping this consistent content. I'm telling you guys, I'm coming with that heat back to back to back to back. So with that being said, man, hope everybody has a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this. Don't forget the name of the game, relaxation and enjoyment, and we're going to catch y'all on the next one.